If your Wi-Fi speeds are entirely way too slow, try these five totally free tips to get better speeds out of your current router hardware. Hey S'mores, I'm Shannon Morris. Welcome to Morse Code. I do tech reviews and tutorials. If you are looking for in-depth tech and gadget content, you have come to the right place, especially if you like security and privacy as well. Today, I'm gonna be delving into five different ways that you can speed up your home Wi-Fi completely for free. See, I have had a lot of experience setting up work and home wireless networks to the point that I could probably turn this one segment into like a whole branch out series about wireless performance. I could talk about applications and router upgrades and all sorts of good stuff. There is a lot of potential issues that you can come across whenever you set up Wi-Fi and many reasons why it may not perform as promised or as expected from issues with your ISP to your hardware to simply understanding how frequencies are transmitted. All of it works together to create an efficient network. So I have five different ways to improve your Wi-Fi signal strength so you can get faster internet speeds all from within your Wi-Fi router's settings. So all of my tips are going to require you to log into your router, so make sure that you have administrative access in some way. If this is a home network and you've never worked with it before, that might be written on the side of your router. If not, if it is something that you have changed or you have edited in the past, hopefully you still have access to your username and password for your admin panel on your router. So number one, log into your Wi-Fi router and check to see if it has any firmware updates available. Usually you can access your Wi-Fi router by typing in 192.168.1.1 into your browser, or it might be 0.1 into your browser's address bar, and then you log in with your router admin credentials. Now, as I mentioned before, you may need to refer to your router manufacturer or your ISP to figure out exactly how to access the settings menu if you have never done it before. The credentials tend to be written on the side of the router from your ISP, or hopefully you have already updated the default username and password to something that only you know. If you haven't yet, that's also a really good thing to do within your router admin panel. All manufacturer router admin panels are going to be a little bit different, but usually you will see a notification on the panel if an update is available. So number one, firmware updates. If you have an older router, check the manufacturer's website for any available updates. These can oftentimes fix known issues, they can give you access to better features, and they can also patch any security vulnerabilities that may have been discovered within your hardware. Once you have updated the firmware on your router, you need to restart it. Sometimes it will automatically restart for you. Sometimes a simple reset can also solve connection issues, so it may be worth the time to just go up to your router, unplug it, and do a hard reset. Sometimes that works quite well. Number two is who is hogging all of your bandwidth? Some Wi-Fi routers can only handle a certain amount of devices or a certain amount of uploads or downloads at one time. As an example, my old, old Wi-Fi setup would not allow for my husband to play online games while I was trying to upload videos to YouTube. If we both tried to do that at the same time, one of us would experience a major slowdown and it was really annoying. Well, it turns out that my old Wi-Fi router was way too slow for the kind of networking that we were doing at home. So we actually had to pay to buy a new router. We had to upgrade. You may be able to solve this without upgrading by limiting some of the devices that are connected to your router. If you watch a lot of Netflix, you can limit Netflix to only stream in full HD in the settings of your Netflix account, as opposed to like streaming in 4K. If you have a data backup system going on on your home computer, you may want to limit how many bytes of data are processed per second so it doesn't hog all of the bandwidth. Now this does require you to take a long hard look at all of the devices that are connected to your router, but it can save you some money as well. Number three is make sure you are kicking off those rogue devices. See one of the cool things about Wi-Fi router admin panels is that you can usually see and decipher what client devices are connected. So clients can be anything from your phone to your husband's phone to your laptop, your smart home devices like smart balls, your smart TV, 
an Amazon Echo, your Google Home, whatever they might be. If you see any devices on there that you just do not recognize, just kick them off and make sure that your Wi-Fi network is password protected. And if you see a bunch of stuff on there that you don't own, you may wanna change your password as well. If a neighbor in your apartment complex is leeching off of your Wi-Fi without your consent, that can slow down your network, but it could also put you in legal trouble if they are using your network to do anything illegal. It could also put your devices at risk of infection from malware or viruses if they are not appropriately protecting their devices. So it's really important to audit who is connected now and then to ensure your wireless network is limited to only devices that you allow. That's probably one of the biggest ones for me and it's something that I, I highly recommend that you do like once a year. Just audit what devices are plugged into your network and what has access to your network. Number four is try changing the Wi-Fi router frequency. Consumer home routers these days are either dual band or tri-band, which means they can output more than one frequency at a time on more than one band. Out of the box, some routers are only configured to work at the 2.4 gigahertz band, and you have to go into your settings to set up other bands, like five gigahertz. If you do have this option, turn on both 2.4 and five gigahertz and set it to only use five gigahertz frequency bands. Most client devices will intelligently choose whichever Wi-Fi frequency is faster and stronger at the time, so you won't have to worry about switching back and forth. If your router allows you to set up both bands under the same SSID, that's the Wi-Fi name that you see whenever you're like on your phone and you're looking at Wi-Fi networks that you can connect to, that's your SSID, whatever name shows up on your Wi-Fi connection. Then keeping them the same will allow your devices to switch automatically and intelligently. Keep in mind that five gigahertz frequencies do have more trouble with distance and obstructions like walls. So the signal strength of five gigahertz may fade the farther you get away from it, while 2.4 gigahertz may stay a lot stronger. And number five, the last one, is change the Wi-Fi channel. So Wi-Fi channels are kind of like TV channels. Even though everyone may be using the same TV provider like Xfinity, folks are watching different channels at different times. In the case of Wi-Fi, 2.4 gigahertz is separated into a bunch of channels, 11 to be exact in the US, and if you're international, you may have different channels available to you. And if all of your neighbors have their Wi-Fi router set to say channel two, then channel two may be incredibly slow because so many people are using that specific channel. In your router settings, try switching to a different channel and then test the speeds and see if you get better ones or better options. So one, six, and 11, tend to be the best channels to choose from since those are considered non-overlapping channels, which means there should be less congestion if you choose to go with one of those channels. Usually you can find this option in your settings on your router, and you can always check the router manufacturer website just to see where that information would be at. Now that I think about it, I, I do have a lot more like router suggestions. So if you are interested in learning more about router placement, mesh systems, or hardware upgrade options, make sure to subscribe to see the next video I do about boosting Wi-Fi speeds because I think that I could talk a lot about this subject. Comment down below about your own tips to get better Wi-Fi speeds and I may give you a shout out on the next Wi-Fi episode. Thank you so much again to my s'mores for subscribing and for watching. I'm Shannon Morse and I'll see you soon. Bye y'all!